Hey everybody, I'm uh, Lieutenant Pierce Jakeaway. And I'm Matt Wolf. Welcome to Station 44. This is Red 3's Fleet Friday. Central Fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPD's arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Callers, let's keep the flames coming out of the unit. All right, so this is uh, Red 3, uh, stationed out of Station 44 uh, at Lincoln and Peoria on the south side of Centennial Airport. Uh, this is a 1998 uh, E1 Titan II. It's got uh, 1,500 gallons of water, uh, 200 gallons of foam, and uh, 500 pounds of purple K. Uh, Red 3 is staffed uh, by the four personnel that are on Engine 44. We cross staff this. Uh, apparatus. So when we go to the airport, uh, we bring our stuff over, our uh, bunker gear, and uh, our equipment over to uh, um, Red 3, our radios and so forth, and uh, we head to the airport. Um, we have three different types of responses to the airport um, or alerts that we could get. An alert one is simply just a notification from the airport saying that they have a plane that uh, may be experiencing some type of an issue, um, but they don't re require our response. Uh, to the airfield. Uh, so usually we'll stay here, we'll monitor uh, the tower and, and listen to uh, uh, what might be going on in case they do upgrade it, uh, but usually we don't respond on alert ones. Uh, an alert two um, is something that we do respond on. Uh, red one, red two from station 35, and red three will go uh, along with our medic unit, which is a crash medic unit. Uh, we'll go up to the airport and that usually entails uh, an electrical issue, um, they're having a landing gear problem or their this display in their cockpit is showing something a little funky. Uh, they could have uh, smoke in the cockpit. Um, so we're just going up to, to basically stand by. Uh, and then an alert three is a confirmed aircraft crash. Um, that they actually have an airport there, or an airplane that's on the ground. So on the front of the, uh, the apparatus, uh, you'll notice that we have a couple of different uh, turrets. Uh, this is just uh, like our, a bumper turret. We're able to flow uh, water and foam uh, out of this uh, turret. Uh, we can also do a sweep uh, when we're uh, pumping and rolling um, to a scene. We can we can use that front that front uh, lower bumper turret. Uh, up top, uh, we've got a that's our our top turret. Uh, and we're able to flow all three agents out of that. So we can flow water uh, and foam, and then we can intermix uh, purple K. Uh, into uh, into that stream and uh, purple K is uh, is rarely used by us. Uh, it's a powder type substance that we introduce into our stream uh, using foam and water uh, to break up what is a, commonly a three dimensional fire. So we've got uh, fuel or some type of uh, accelerant that is uh, leaking off of a wing or an engine and dripping onto the ground. Um, you know, we're having a hard time putting it out with the foam. We'll use that purple K to kind of um, distribute that fuel so that we can get a, a better pattern or a better um, extinguishment of, of that uh, three-dimensional fire. Uh, the white uh, little spherical ball up there, that's a, a FLIR. It's a forward-looking infrared camera that we can use. Uh, it's tied into the cab with uh, a screen so at night uh, we can use it um, in some of our areas where the lighting may not be very good uh, we can look for uh, a downed aircraft or victims that may have been uh, uh, in that aircraft uh, sometimes a lot of times our crashes aren't on the airport uh, they're out in uh, the part of our district so it makes it a little easier for us at night to pick up on those thermal hits um, or see kind of through the, the clouds or the darkness um, makes it look more like daylight for us um, down here on the bottom of uh, underneath the bumper turret. Now we call this a chin reel. Um, it's a hundred foot uh, booster line essentially. Uh, and this allows us to, same thing, we can get all three agents out of, uh, out of this, unit, this line. So we can do water, we can do foam, 
um, or we can do the purple K. That's why you see the, the two lines here. Uh, one is for us to in, in, induce that purple K into the stream. Uh, we're able to uh, control uh, a lot of the controls for, for this line down here uh, so we can quickly uh, uh, get water and, and stuff to that line if need be. Um, and we don't have to rely on the engineer to, to do that. So, uh, we've got scene lighting up top and then uh, that little bar right there, it kind of looks like a sprinkler system. It's just for radiant heat that uh, we may experience. We can put that on to protect uh, the front of Red 3 and that windshield. So this is a L1 compartment, the first compartment on the uh, engineer side. Um, and this is uh, just some, some basic tools that we would need on the airport. Um, you're not going to see a whole lot of equipment on here just because it's, it's very uh, uh, dedicated for the airport and for uh, response to aircraft rescue. But uh, we have a 150 foot pre-connect. Um, it's an inch and three quarter line that we can quickly deploy off of uh, off the side. Um, Red 3's main responsibility when we do go to the airport is to uh, gain access into the fuselage, um, shut down all the equipment and the controls in the cockpit, whether it be fuel, uh, oxygen, um, any power that may be coming from the batteries or the, uh, like an APU, an auxiliary power unit um, that, uh, that helps power the, the plane. Uh, we're going to get in, we're going to shut those systems down, and then we're going to start um, you know, either uh, fire attack uh, or getting products of combustion, smoke, and so forth out of that fuselage so that we give a better chance for the occupants uh, to get out safely. Um, so our main purpose is we're going to grab this line and we're going to go interior uh, through uh, one of the doors uh, that we have access to and get inside as quickly as possible. Uh, we've got some wheel chocks just uh, for securing a plane so it doesn't uh, roll on us. Uh, Irons, uh, Halligan, and uh, Axe complement. Um, got uh, crash axe, um, just some other tools that we might need to use for um, gaining access into uh, into a fuselage or an airplane. Um, then we've got a bunch of these uh, landscaping flags, different colors that, um, in a true an alert three situation, um, there may be a lot of evidence or pieces of uh, the plane out there. So we'll go out and start marking that for uh, the investigators that will come in at a later time to determine what happened. Uh, in this compartment, it's uh, a lot like our uh, other engines and so forth. It's uh, water supply um, for our engineer. We've got uh, a hydro bag. And then uh, just short sections or pony sections of five inch, two and a half uh, that we can uh, utilized to, to get water back into our tank. Uh, we've got uh, some things to produce some foam if, if need be, um, but uh, pretty straightforward, just uh, mainly for water supply. Um, anything we may need with that. This is the pump panel, uh, exterior pump panel. It's very rarely that we're gonna use this. We'll mainly be inside the cab. If we're ever out here using this pump panel, it's gonna be for a long duration scene. Uh, for instance, that could be a large fuel spill that we'll be using a lot of foam. Uh, this is to activate the pump, uh, power itself, flip that on, tank the pump will then activate uh, the valve that opens the water tank to the pump, and then we have to activate the, the water switch itself, and then we can increase the pressure from here. We can tell the pressure on these gauges, this is overall pump pressure, and then each, each discharge has its own gauge as well. If we have to uh, have a uh, water supply we can have a tender come in and this goes directly into the pump and that way we can be on scene we won't be able to move once that is connected we do have a foam gauge and the water gauge uh, and then this is to turn on the foam and the percentage of each of those so this compartment is just uh, really a hatch for our mechanics that uh, can get in and work on uh, the electrical and there's some fuses in here. Uh, that kind of big uh, gray cylinder, that's uh, that's where all the purple K um, powder is stored. Um, and on the other side, we'll show you how we charge that, but um, that's where all the purple K gets charged up and uh, ready for deployment. Uh, so this one is just uh, basically our fuse box. Um, so fuses and so forth, our generator on the, uh, on the red. Um, and that black box, that's a Kuzmol system. Um, we plug an electrical cord in uh, 
when the apparatus are in the station and that just allows it to charge the, the equipment that we, we have on here. All right, so we'll head up top, um, to the top of the red. Uh, we've got batteries on, on each side, so this is just uh, uh, batteries for, uh, for the red that are contained in that step. Uh, let me show you the compartments that we have up here. Up on top of Red 3, there's a couple different compartments that we use um, just to store different pieces of, uh, of equipment. Um, so this one, we just have a bunch of electrical cords in case we need to run some lighting or anything to a scene. Uh, a lot of times we don't have any light where we're going. Uh, got some tow cables, some tow straps, some pulleys if we need to secure a plane um, or immobilize it so that it, uh, it's secure enough for us to, uh, to work around it, we can use that. Uh, and a lot of times we use Port 5, who's our uh, airport operations contact at the airport, uh, to facilitate doing some of that. Uh, generator um, up here, this controls a lot of our stuff from um, lighting and, and so forth, our, uh, some of our tools that we'll see later, uh, get controlled off of that. Um, so that's up top. You'll see that, uh, that's our water tank. Uh, we, we can fill it from the top, uh, but we just fill it uh, from our intakes on the side. Uh, I've got a pipe pool. Um, and a 14 foot uh, little extension ladder uh, that allows us, if we have a bigger airplane that comes into the, the airport, um, a lot of times we, we can't get in, there's no uh, stair unit there, so we'll, we'll use a ladder to, to gain access into, into that airport. A couple of shovels in case we need to do any kind of damming or diking or diverting of uh, uh, any spilled fuel or uh, anything that may uh, be coming out of the, the plane. Um, if we need to contain some foam, uh, of that sort. Um, and then this compartment here is, uh, we have a K-12 rescue saw um, that uh, allows us to uh, uh, additionally uh, help us get in or gain access to a fuselage if we need to cut through uh, the skin of a fuselage or um, assist us in getting inside of that, that plane, uh, we, uh, we use that. And then just in this uh, compartment or uh, access hatch, this is our purple K, it comes in powder form. Um, it has to be uh, fluffed or actuated with uh, some type of uh, gas or um, oxygen, so uh, that's how we fill that uh, compartment uh, um, when we need to. One unique thing about this apparatus is that it's a rear drive. So by that I mean that the engine is in the rear and then the transmission goes underneath and powers the vehicle. Uh, it's a Detroit series engine, much like our other ones. This one is just a little bit older. It does not have some of the DEF components and new exhaust emission standards like some of the new apparatus do. All right, so we'll finish up on this side, uh, Red 3. Um, just in here, uh, I was telling you about that uh, uh, gas or oxygen that we have to uh, use to uh, charge our Purple K system. Uh, currently, this is nitrogen that we're using. Uh, we're converting everything over to oxygen. Um, at some point, so uh, currently we're using nitrogen to charge that tank um, in there. All right, here's a raised lower, um, like our ambulances. It's just, uh, these bottles are pretty heavy, so when we need to change these out, uh, this will drop to the ground uh, via a winch, uh, cable winch lift, and we can change it out. Uh, usually our mechanics are uh, responsible for doing that, and uh, just makes it easy to access that and work on the apparatus. Another discharge there off this side. Uh, over here, it's just uh, we've got a, a DeWalt sawzall. Um, it's up in this compartment. Uh, unlike some of our other apparatus, uh, carry Hamacho, we, we're still carrying the Hearst Tommy tool. Uh, but it's battery powered. We are able to, uh, if that runs out of power, we've got a, a, an extension cord that we can run to that that uh, will still allow us to, uh, to operate that. And we've got a Toolbox, just uh, your run of the mill tools and, and so forth that uh, we may need. Um, there's another crash axe. Um, so, um, snips that we can get in, uh, specific for uh, wire cutting, um, the wire rope cutter. So. Just anything we would need for uh, assisting us in getting in or cutting into a fuselage. Um, in this compartment, uh, just a bunch of extinguishers. Um, we have a couple of uh, Purple K um, portable extinguishers. We've got a, a dry chem um, or a CO2 uh, with a lot of the avionics that are inside of a, um, a cabin um, of a plane. 
Uh, we try to protect those as much as possible. So um, by putting water or anything else, we would damage those. So if we can, we uh, just use the proper uh, extinguisher uh, for the situation we have. Um, we've got a fire decon bucket right here. Um, just like uh, everything else, um, we're pretty conscientious of, uh, of the cancer. So um, if we do need to, we've got the, the capabilities of doing a decon um, at the airfield prior to coming back. of this vehicle is that you drive just off of center so you're not driving on the very left side the other aspect to this is that this vehicle is very large it pretty much takes up the whole lane the overall weight of this vehicle you have to really anticipate your stops uh, and turns it just takes a long time to stop or more time to stop than the engines do because of the sheer weight of the, the water in the tank uh, like most of our apparatus, there is no keys for these. The master switch is here and then we can start and stop the engine here. Our master light switches are here, so that activates the emergency lights. This is a four-wheel drive capability vehicle, so we have those switches here. Normal gauges as any uh, other vehicle, speedometer, RPM, our transmission shift, and then we have multiple ways of activating the pump. Uh, we have one way here is the water switch. This, this one allows us to pump and roll so we can pump water and drive. This one here uh, is a water switch as well, but we can't pump and roll, so it's stationary only. It also has the foam switch, and uh, with the foam, it causes cancer uh, since it's class B, so we try not to accidentally activate it. So this is a extinguisher pin that we keep uh, in here to keep us from accidentally activating the foam. Uh, we can also activate the foam this way, which we have a sticker over that as well, so we don't activate that. The purple K switch is also here. So the LT talked about uh, the purple K is a three-dimensional fire. Uh, this will fluff the tank, so it takes the, the nitrogen from the tank on the side, fluffs it into or puts it into the uh, purple K tank and fluffs that so that it's, it's ready to use. Um, and then uh, there's the generator switch. Again, the LT talked about the generator on top. We activate the front lights and side lights with that as well at night. And then we have some undercarriage uh, sprinkler valves, uh, which again, will activate with the pump once that switch is on. In case we're driving over fuel or ground that's on fire, we can activate those. Uh, from there, we can activate or control our top or our bumper turret from here. And then this joystick, we can control the bumper turret and turn it on. We also have the top turret we can control from here. It's all manual, uh, but pretty easy to use. We can control the water, uh, turning it on here, which this valve will come down and opens. And it's actually pretty loud once we get that going. Uh, further over, we have the, the water and foam levels. So we don't have to get out and look at the side panels. We can see how much water and foam we have in here. Uh, normal radio, our MDT is over there as well. And then we have our FLIR screen, which is the forward looking infrared. Uh, so much like our handheld ticks, that you can see. And then we have front cameras as well. As you can also tell, this is a pretty tight cab. Uh, with having four people in here, it's pretty tight. But then we also have the capability to put on air packs, much like our engines.
see we have a backer. And you can tell uh, the camera there helps us back up. systems in here. Uh, the top one there is our 800 uh, megahertz radio and uh, then we have a couple of VHF um, with uh, the bottom one being our uh, uh, ability to listen to uh, the airport tower uh, departure and, uh, and uh, arrival. So when we go up on an incident we can hear them talking to the plane uh, but then we also have a dedicated uh, radio channel uh, for us, which is um, Centennial Airport A15. So we can talk to the airport operations folks about uh, what's going on, what they're experiencing, how many souls might be on board, how much fuel they have, um, and whatever issue that we're responding to. And, and uh, uh, so it, it, it just makes it easier for us to communicate with uh, airport operations, and get a better idea of what's going on. All right, everybody, well, thanks for uh, coming by and visiting us at uh, Station 44 and Red 3's Fleet Friday. Uh, stay tuned for upcoming episodes of uh, our newest edition of Red 4. Stay safe, everybody.